Good evening, good night, good morning, whatever time you guys are watching this. Welcome back to Weapons Free 86. Today, we're gonna fix the FRS. Uh, a lot's going on in the past month. I haven't posted a video in a while. Sorry about that, been busy, been broke, been waiting on parts to show up. Um, if you guys recall, when I went down to Global Time Attack at Road Atlanta, I had a coilover mishap and I broke the top off my Race Cop Engineering Tarmac 2 coilovers and the FRS has been down since then. Um, I finally got a new one in. I'm gonna get that on the car today. Uh, also got some upgraded brake rotors for the rear of the Supra. Uh, just a little update on that. I did go and trade a, a guy for those SRT8 brake calipers and rotors and everything for the OEM Toyota Super Twin Turbo one. Now I'm going to swap the fronts for some uh, endless Racing 6 big brake kit for the front. Uh, I'm gonna do the endless rotors on the rear and then I'm probably gonna have the calipers powder coated to match the front calipers. Uh, a lot of a lot of guys just upgrade to a two-piston rear, but the Super already has a two-piston rear, so I don't need to upgrade it. I'm just gonna make it match, and then obviously have the endless rotors in the rear. Uh, I'm gonna drop some MX-72 Plus pads in the front and rear. It's a good street track pad combo. Um, it won't be as aggressive as my G-Lock R12s are on the FRS. The FRS is mainly a track car, not really a street car. Super is more of a street car. Uh, also, just doing a lot of maintenance stuff for the Super. I got a new AC compressor. I got um, a new oil pan. I don't know if I've updated you guys on the oil pan situation. We were, me and my buddy, uh, we're doing a little bit of maintenance on the Supra, and the previous owner, one of the previous owners, not sure which one, had actually stripped out the oil pan bolt and then replaced it with a very coarse threaded. Um, AutoZone bolt, not AutoZone, Home Depot bolt, they literally cut off, shaved it down to make it fit about the same size as the oil pan bolt, and then thread it in there. Surprisingly, it doesn't leak, but I bought a brand new oil pan, which is right down there. I just gotta get some time to put it in, and then the Super will be just about perfect. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get on to do installing this coilover, but first, I gotta remove the factory coilover that I put back in there just so I can move the car. Cause I don't know if you could tell, but I moved the garage around. I want more of a uh, showcase for the Supra. So the FRS gets the back little cubby. But I uh, got a little bit of cool stuff for the FRS as well. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that. That is off of the 14R60s in Japan. There's only a hundred of those made. So there's only a hundred of those made, and I believe I'm one of maybe three in America. I believe I was the first one. However, since I posted the picture, a lot of FRS guys went to Yahoo Auctions Japan and have been finding them. So I think I'm maybe the third one now. So we're gonna torque down this coilover and get it on the car. Okay, so last coilover that I broke, I literally snapped off the top of the coilover shaft. So this is pretty much stuck on there. I contacted Beerus. They sold me a single one. Uh, so I'm gonna get this one on here. All right, got that assembled. It's on there. I don't know what the torque rating is because it spins a shaft, but I assembled this, the top hat, off the shock, which is what uh, Race Comp Engineering recommended me do. Now I gotta pull the wheel off, pull that coilover out, and then pop this bad boy in. I'm gonna use a paint marker to mark a spot on the top of the, the nut here to just to make sure that it doesn't back off. I didn't hit it as hard as I did last time. Uh, also, 
It doesn't have as many threads through here as last time. I think I tightened it down a little bit too much, which might have caused the uh, cool over to snap. All right, so I think it's just these two, either 17s or 19s. I left the, oh, that's bent now. That's great. Now I'm gonna replace that. Ah, oh, Bennett, that's not good. And then these little nuts on top. So it looks like I'll be able to fix the coilover today. However, I will not be able to attach the sway bar today because I bent the freaking stock tie rod. All right, coilover top hat is bolted in. Coilover itself is bolted in. Brake lines up. Everything's nice and torqued down. Only problem is <laughs> that thing is bent all up. I guess when I was moving the cars around, this uh, got wedged in between the spindle and the uh, frame there, and it just bent the crap out of that. So I guess I can run over to pick and pull and see if that they have FRS over there. Hopefully they have my have the uh, tie whatever these things are called rod ends, tie ends, tie rod ends, and uh, hopefully pick one up for cheap. So. I'm gonna get this wheel back on, mess with this ride height a little bit. Uh, it's kind of a boring process of up and down, so I'll just show you guys the final product and then uh, I'll have to tackle that issue. So we might be taking a trip out to the pick and pull. All right guys, the pick and pull didn't have anything for the FRS, so I went ahead and just dropped it back on all four. The coilover is installed, just the sway bar is not hooked up. Um, but if you can see right here, the ISF is back. So that's good and bad at the same time. Uh, if you've made it this far in the video, I am kind of torn right now. I'm, I don't know if I want to continue tracking the FRS or just go ahead and start a build on this car. Uh, if I do start building the ISF, I will more than likely part out and sell the FRS. Um, I don't need two track cars. I don't need two coupes. I have a child that I have to carry around. The FRS has no back seats. So it's kind of only purpose is tracking. So if I was to track either the ISF or the Supra, there's kind of no need to have the FRS. So I'm really considering parting that car out and tracking one of these two. I'm kind of leaning towards the ISF as it's rarer than a Supra, but they're not as expensive as a Supra. Uh, also, the naturally aspirated V8 is very reliable. It can take a ton of abuse, and the car was actually built to be a performance vehicle. Um, and it's way more modern than the Supra is. So I'm kind of at a toss up with what to do with all three of my cars. If you guys have an opinion, go ahead and leave a comment saying what you would do if you had one of these three cars, or if you had all three of these cars, what would you do? Um, obviously, I don't have, well, I'm, I'm on a very, limited budget, so I don't have enough money to build the ISF, the Supra, and the FRS. So like I said, one of either the FRS has gotta go or keep tracking the, the FRS. So with that being said, sorry I haven't been posting in a while. Um, this weekend coming up, I got tickets to IMSA from Lexus Racing. They hooked me up, they gave me a couple of free passes to go into the pits and uh, do the Lexus VIP experience and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I am going to be filming that. That will be posted probably next Wednesday if I can get all the, the editing done. Shouldn't be a problem. But I'll be doing that next weekend so look out for that video. And I'm going to start trying to get back on my weekly video po uh, posting because i kind of been slack here lately. Sorry about that. However, that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you guys next video at, at Virginia International Raceway with Lexus Racing. Later.